What up nerds? My name is Leslie Smith. Welcome to the Nerdy Narrative. Today I am going to do something I had sworn off for a while. I'm going to do a book tag. Not just any book tag, but a really, really good book tag that was created by my friend Dominish Books. I will, of course, have Dominish linked in the description box down below so that you can see his original tag. I've been struggling. Everyone is putting out end of the year bookish videos about their top 10, their favorite series. I have been on the struggle bus because I read in so many different genres. So I've been having a really difficult time with it and I just got to the point where I was like, I am not going to do it. I'll just do some sporadic book tags this year because inevitably I'm going to come across one that's, what was your favorite book from last year? What's your most recent favorite classic? And so I'll just answer those there. Question number one, your favorite book of the year. Oh, uh, that's easy. Friends of the channel who've been around last year, you know that was actually not hard to pick. It is Stephen Graham Jones' The Only Good Indians. The really funny thing about that, this was the first book I read in 2021. I read it in January. It was my patron pick of the month. Tyler did a phenomenal job because not only is this my favorite book of the year, it's my new favorite author. I started tearing through Stephen Graham Jones's work last year and it's going to carry over into this year. Such a great book. Such a great book. I literally own a copy of every edition except one. And just building up off of what was my favorite book of the year, I decided to add what was my favorite novella of the year. And that is going to be Only the Stains Remain by Ross Jeffrey. This novella, this story is extremely personal to me. It's very special to me. It's a phenomenal story. I highly recommend it. It is done so, so well. Just superb. Absolutely superb. It firmly cemented Ross Jeffrey's place at my table of favorite authors. Question number two. Your favorite series started in 21 but not finished. Friends of the channel, say it with me. First Law by Joe Amber Crombie. I actually almost did complete this entire series well, okay, so there's a trilogy, there's three standalones, there's a short, there's a short story collection, and then the Age of Madness trilogy. I almost read all of the books in the First Law world. One carried over into 2022, The Wisdom of Crowds. So that counts. I adore the series, adore this author. I wouldn't put it past myself to be just like Leanna's library and start an immediate reread this year. Question number three, your favorite series finished. I thought this was going to be difficult. It turns out this is really easy and I'll bet all of you that have been watching the channel for a while you're able to answer these questions without even seeing the books. I chose The Gunslinger as the one to hold up to represent the Dark Tower series because the more that I think about it and reflect on that series, this is the most important book of that series. Whenever anybody starts this series, it is their least favorite. They don't understand this book. It is the key to the series. It is the beginning and the end, in my opinion. I get chills when I think about it. This book is just beautiful. I always said Wizard and Glass was my favorite of the series, although I loved every single book, except I was a little bored with Wolves of the Kala. But every single book was just a beautiful journey, a wonderful series, a series that has become my favorite series of all time in regards to fantasy. And probably, nope, nope, Nightmare Land Chronicles is going to take the horror category coming and going. But the reason why Nightmare Land takes that category is, in my opinion, the first arc of the Nightmare Land Chronicles, the first six books, are so on par with the same magic that Stephen King created with the Dark Tower series that that's why those two are on even kill, in my opinion. Next question. Your favorite new author discovered this year? I love Stephen Graham Jones. I will scream it as long as you will listen to it. I love his writing style. He is what is called a literary horror author, meaning his stories have an underlying theme. He's trying to teach us stuff and it's very interesting. It has inspired me to do research and learn more about what he's talking about. So question five, 
is a simple enough prompt. It's asking, what is your new favorite character of the year? Well, because I read so many different genres, I couldn't pick just one. And all three characters are from three different genres, but they're also three different types of characters. What I mean by that, my favorite new character that I just love because they were such a wonderful person comes from John Steinbeck's East of Eden, Samuel Hamilton. I just loved him. He was such a kind man who loved everybody, just always had such a wonderful attitude. Love Samuel. Now, as far as villain, my favorite new villain is from The Goners, which is book one in L. Stevenson's Boatmore Butcher trilogy. Book two is going to be out in April. I am so excited and I can't tell you why because if you haven't read this book, it will be a spoiler. So if you haven't read it, now's the time. I am going to be doing a group read, a group reread of it in my Discord. You are all welcome to join. Discord is linked in the description down below. Okay, Animal Companion. I had to do a new favorite Animal Companion of the year. That is going to be Solove from The Bear and the Nightingale, which is book one in Catherine Arden's Winter Night Trilogy. For those of you who have not read this trilogy, I'm just going to stop there and not tell you who or what he is because that is just a piece of magic you need to learn for yourself. Number six, your favorite new release of 2021. I have to go with M.A. Carrick's The Mask of Mirrors. I actually read this twice last year. It came out, I believe, in April. I reread it in November because I got approved for the ARC for book two, which came out in early December. I cannot recommend this book enough. It is adult fantasy. It is wonderful. It's Venetian inspired. Ugh, the political intrigue is just masterful. I love this book. The only person who didn't care for it was Jake over at the Bookish Drummer. So it is not for everybody, but everybody else that I recommend it to that read it has loved it. So the next question is your favorite reread of the year. Uh, I'm going to go with a book that I read for the first time in February of 2021 and I reread it in September. Their Eyes Were Watching God by Zora Neale Hurston, a beautiful classic that is just about one woman's journey of finding herself and not taking no for an answer, not letting fear take over, but doing what it took to be happy, to have a good life. Absolutely adored the story. Like I said, I read it twice in the same year. It's going to be an annual reread for me. Another favorite author whose work I've been going through like water. So good. And here I added a couple of more favorites of the year. But for favorite manga or comic of the year, I chose Chew by John Lehman. Okay, so I'm holding up Chew, but I mean the other Chew. He has a series called Chew, uh, C-H-E-W. This is the follow-up series to that one, which I am collecting. So that's why I have it in physical copy and I'm using it as a placeholder since I don't have the first series. Most people would call it a true crime comic. I would call it a horror comic because it's what would happen to the world if you couldn't eat chicken anymore. Look, you, chicken is outlawed because of the bird flu. The bird flu hit and wiped out millions of people worldwide. So chicken has become outlawed. That's a horror story to me. And then the other category I added is favorite gifted read of the year. And what I mean by gifted book of the year is the book that was gifted to me. And that has to be none other than Ungodly by Braden Reddick. This was sent to me by Heidi Locke. Oh, one of my favorite reads of the year. Beautifully written, just gorgeous. It's one of those that is very similar to Catherine Arden's The Bear and the Nightingale, The Girl in the Tower, the Winter Night Trilogy, where there were chapters, whole chapters, I stopped and reread before I could continue the story because they were written so beautifully or just had such an impact on me. Absolutely phenomenal story. Highly recommend. Next question. Your biggest surprise of the year. So that has to be Lily from Daniel Barnett's Nightmare Land Chronicles. Lily is the end of the first arc of the Nightmare Land Chronicles. The first arc contains six books. The second arc will have the other six books. I was not expecting what happened here. 
I had in my mind where I thought this was gonna go. It went nowhere near any of those places. So many unexpected things that happened that while I didn't expect them, it made sense in order for the story to move forward in the way that it needed to. That doesn't mean I like everything that happened. It does not mean that I was not sending angry messages to Daniel of why, and I can't tell you why, because if you haven't read it, it would be a spoiler. But this book is a thing of beauty. It is just perfection, the perfect end to the first arc, which is the same thing I would say about The Dark Tower. A lot of people, the seventh book, they don't like the way Stephen King chose to end it. But to me, it couldn't have ended any better way. It was perfect. Same feelings here, exact same feelings here. Daniel did exactly what needed to be done. I mean, if I was the author of this series, I would not have had the strength and the bravery to do what Daniel did. Now, if that interests you and you haven't heard me talk enough about Nightmare Land Chronicles on this channel to where you haven't picked up any of these books yet, guys, now is the time. Now is the time to get into it because the first arc is complete. Again, I don't know of anybody well, I think Patrick didn't care for it, but I think he was going to continue the series, so his mind may change. I can't think of anybody else that did not pick up this series based on my recommendation and did not rave about it. Your biggest disappointment of the year. I just do not like these questions, but I'm going to answer it because if you've been around the channel for a while, you know that my biggest disappointment of the year came from Eric LaRocco with things have gotten worse since we last spoke. Now this is what I have heard others describe as weird horror. So I'm going to go out on a limb and say I don't like weird horror. So many people loved this novella. I, it just, it didn't make sense to me. It was too short for how rapidly the things happened that in my opinion would have taken months to cultivate. It also just was not written in a believable way. This took place in 2000. They were having conversations via email and instant messenger, but these emails were several pages long and just written so poetically. Emails are generally brief and to the point as are instant messages. It just, it didn't work for me. It just didn't work for me. So I'm going to say I don't like weird horror. I have one more I want to add. What was my favorite collection of 2021? That is Spontaneous Human Combustion by Richard Thomas. It's not out yet. It comes out February 22nd. I was graciously sent a copy of the ARC by the publisher, Turner Publishing, and I loved this collection. Every story in this collection, which is unusual. You don't get a 14, 15 story collection and love every story, enjoy every story. I actually find the stories full of reread capability. I am so excited for some of my other friends to read this so we can talk about theories that I have. I love stories that make me think. I love someone who can write a story that has a beginning, a middle, and an end and leaves me feeling good when it's over. I absolutely love this collection. It is my favorite. At the last minute in December when I finished it, it edged out what one wouldn't do, but that was edited by Scott J. Moses. I just cannot recommend this one enough. It's just so well done, so well written, and it definitely put Richard Thomas on a list of authors I want to read more of. And this year, there's one last question. The one book from this year you would recommend to anyone? That's difficult because I read in so many different genres. I feel that people who watch my videos either read in some but not all. So a book that I would recommend to anyone. I'm going to go with one of my few nonfiction reads of the year. I'm going to go with Man's Search for Meaning by Victor E. Frankel. What this book is, it's the memoirs of Dr. Frankel when he was put into a Nazi death camp. The argument he raises here in this book is that we cannot avoid suffering, but we can choose how we cope with it. How to find the meaning in the suffering and use it to find a renewed purpose and move forward. Dr. Frankel, his view is that what drives us as humans is not 
the pursuit of pleasure, but more of what do we find meaningful. It makes sense. It's so inspirational. I loved it. This is one of those that you open it up to the first page and you start highlighting and you literally just highlight the entire way through. I did this as an immersion read, which I'm so glad that I did. So I listened to the audiobook. The narrator was wonderful along with reading it to just really absorb it. It's another one I plan on rereading every year. And that brings us to the close of Dominish's year in review book tag. Dominish, thank you so much for creating a book tag that helps people like me who cannot make a decision on how they want to tell about their favorite books of the year. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this. I know a lot of you were probably able to guess my answers to some of these prompts. Was there any that I chose that surprised you? Let me know in the comments down below what your favorite book of the year was for 2021. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a fantastic rest of your day and I will see you in the next one.